Hello everyone, today we will have our 8th lecture and today we will discuss uh, the effect of pressure on heat treatment parameter. Mainly at temperature and environmental condition. Whether we need to do it at high pressure or low pressure. In last lecture, we saw one expression which is Clausius Clapeyron equation. And that expression tells me the equilibrium of a system when the vapor is in equilibrium with solid or liquid metal or rather any material, rather it is an equilibrium between condensed system and the, its vapor. So, it says L n p equal to minus del h r t plus plus some constant. And in this case, this temperature is the operating temperature and that time the pressure equilibrium pressure is called saturation vapor pressure. It is actually the pressure exerted by its own vapor on that condensed phase. Now, this is important because if we compare two materials at the same temperature and if we find that P of metal 1 that means the saturation vapor pressure of metal 1 at a temperature T. So, both the cases the temperatures are same and saturation vapor pressure of metal 2. If we see that this is greater than this that means metal 1 would like to form vapor easily rather than metal 2 because in order to maintain that high saturation vapor pressure we need more number of molecules in the vapor phase of that particular metal. And here we consider that metal 1 and metal 2 both are in solid or it could be in liquid state. Now, these particular understanding can help us in deciding temperature and pressure for doing heat treatment. Let us say we consider a uh, heat treatment of uh, brass. We know that brass is a, if we consider alpha brass, alpha brass, it is a, it is an alloy of copper and zinc, around close to 30 percent zinc can be mixed and that can be made into solution with copper. So, that brass in that brass, if we compare the saturation vapor pressure of brass and zinc, let us say I fixed saturation vapor pressure for both the metals copper and P of zinc. And we have a, we, we can have some data and this data has been found out from book which is a kind of handbook and that book is uh, the steel heat treatment handbook edited by G. E. Totten and M. A. H. Howes. So, there a kind of data bank it shows that if we consider that vapor pressure to be saturation vapor pressure to be 10 to the power minus 4 millibar, 
both the cases. Then the temperature at which this saturation vapor pressure can be achieved in case of copper it is let me just find out in case of copper it is 1036 degree Celsius whereas in case of zinc it is 248 degree Celsius. That means same saturation vapor pressure in order to achieve that the equilibrium temperature should be maintained at 248 degree Celsius in case of zinc and whereas it is 1036 degree Celsius in case of copper. It means that zinc has got much higher tendency to go to the vapor phase. Now, if we try to heat treat these two this particular alpha brass at any temperature which is close to below 1036 degree Celsius and between 248 degree Celsius in between this temperature range if we would like to do heat treatment then the possibility would be whenever we am doing heat treatment of this particular let us say a piece of copper zinc alloy alpha brass it would have its own vapor phase. So, it could be copper as well as it will be copper as well as zinc in the proportion what we have there if we assume that this is happening there, but we will see that the zinc vapor formation would be much higher than copper the tendency. So, that means the zinc would try to go into the vapor phase in order to maintain that equilibrium because at any temperature we must have some saturation vapor pressure and we see that the saturation vapor pressure of copper is much lower than zinc. So, zinc would evaporate and if zinc evaporates would you think that this copper zinc if it is 70 30 brass this 30 percent zinc would no longer be there on the surface the zinc content would go down. So, that means we are changing the property of the metal or the alloy because of this phenomena. So, what we can do in order to prevent this because zinc evaporation cannot be stopped it has to maintain its saturation vapor pressure. Then one possibility is we have to do that heat treatment at little lower temperature this is one, but at the same time we cannot go further lower than that temperature what we are thinking of because if we have if we go for a low temperature uh, heat treatment. So, the desired result would be obtained at a much higher time because the kinetics would be very slow. So, we cannot go very low temperature for doing heat treatment. So, that case we have to look into the environment part of it. So, this environment section we have to see. Now, let us say we have this situation at some temperature we are doing this heat treatment of brass and in this environment if we already have some molecules gas molecules then whenever this zinc atom is trying to escape from the surface of that solid alloy it would also collide with those already existing gaseous molecules. So, when do we have that collision there will be tendency that zinc atom would have much lower degree of formation of vapor zinc atom would try to be stopped because of that external gaseous molecules and the evaporation of zinc can be controlled or can be decreased. So, that means we need to do at little higher pressure, pressure of this chamber needs to be increased. So, that means we have to do it at little higher pressure than the atmospheric pressure, so that we can stop this zinc evaporation and then also we have to see that we should not use some gas for example, we cannot use compressed air into it because that air contains oxygen that oxygen might oxidize this brass. So, we have to use some inert gas either argon or nitrogen. So, this is uh, another way to prevent evaporation of metal and then subsequently metal loss from the metal from that alloy. Now, in case of steel in case of steel this is also taken care of. For example, in case of steel if we have elements like manganese, copper, chromium 
these are having bit higher saturation vapor pressure than iron and these are added into steel to improve many other properties like strength, hardness, corrosion resistance So, hence we have to also be little considerate that we ca cannot consider any metal loss from that steel and we have to protect the loss of manganese, loss of copper, loss of chromium from the surface. One such example is if we consider a kind of 14 percent chromium steel, if it is heated at 990 degrees Celsius for two and half hours at a pressure of 10 to the power minus 2 millibar. That means, in a chamber we have a steel containing 14 percent chromium and that pressure is maintained at is maintained at 2 to the power minus 2 millibar and the temperature is 990 degrees Celsius, we hardly have any loss of chromium from the surface of that particular block, steel block. However, if the pressure is kept at 10 to the power minus 4 millibar, that means we are introducing vacuum into it and if we operate at the same temperature and for same time it has been noticed that the surface from the surface region, the surface region we have loss of chromium about 0 0.5 percent. This is amount of chromium loss. Why? Because chromium has got higher saturation vapor pressure. For example, if we consider iron and chromium, if we try to see if the saturation vapor pressure is in case of chromium if if it is 1.3 into 10 to the power minus 2 millibar at a temperature 1206 degree Celsius. That means, these are the equilibrium pressure and temperature whereas, the same thing if I try to see in case of iron pressure is saturation paper pressure is same 1.3 into 10 to the power minus 2 millibar that time the temperature at which this particular saturation vapor pressure can be attained is at much higher temperature. So, in case of iron it is 1448 degree Celsius. That means, if the pressure of that system is maintained at 10 to the power minus 2, I could see that that 900 deg 990 degree Celsius is below the equilibrium temperature to attain the saturation vapor pressure of 1.3 into 10 to the power minus 2 millibar in case of chromium. So, that means, the saturation vapor pressure at 90, 900 degree Celsius would be much lower and we have a data which says that around 993 degree Celsius the chromium has a saturation vapor pressure of 1.3 into 10 to the power minus 4 millibar. Hence, if the temperature is maintained at 990 degree Celsius and if the pressure is maintained at 10 to the power minus 2 millibar, I would not be able to reach to this saturation vapor pressure and the pressure is already maintained to the minus 2. So, at 990 degree Celsius the saturation vapor pressure of chromium is much lower than this, lower than this. So, the chromium vapor formation would be much lower at 990 degree Celsius if the pressure is maintained at 10 to the minus 2. In case of iron, the temperature at which this particular vapor pressure is attained 1.3 into 10 to the minus 2 is much higher. So, the question of iron vapor formation would be also minimal. So, the chromium loss can be prevented. But the situation would be different 
if the pressure is 10 to the power minus 4 millibar, this chamber pressure is maintained at the minus 4 millibar. So, that time I could see this particular pressure is matching with the chromium vapor pressure at 993 degree Celsius, which is close to 990 degree Celsius, which is the operating temperature. So, that means I would definitely have more chromium molecule formation in the gas, chromium atom coming into the gas form. But in case of iron at 900, let me see if we could get the same vapor pressure 10 to the power minus 4 millibar, what is the temperature at which this particular vapor pressure is attained? In case of iron, it is 1196 degree Celsius. This is very, very high compared to the operating temperature which is 990 degree Celsius. So, I will not have much of iron vapor formation, but I will have chromium vapor formation because it is close to the saturation vapor pressure of chromium. This temperature is close to that saturation vapor pressure temperature, that equilibrium temperature corresponding to saturation vapor pressure and the chamber pressure is maintained at 10 to the minus 4 millibar. So, what would happen? So, now iron vapor formation would be less, but chromium vapor formation would be more. So, if we compare the relative vapor formation, iron vapor formation would be less, chromium would be more. So, the chromium loss would be experienced. Okay. So, that is what we have 0 0.5 percent chromium loss. So, now we see the importance of this saturation vapor pressure during heat treatment. We need to be careful. For example, manganese, chromium, copper, all of them have a low vapor pressure. So, when we operate these particular steels containing manganese, copper and chromium, we should see that the pressure should be such that it is higher than the saturation vapor pressure of that particular element in that steel at the temperature where the steel is being operated. Now, so, we see that pressure in the chamber, heat treatment chamber, is important. And whereas, in case of zinc case, we could see that the temperature also is an important factor. Even in case of steel, this chromium loss part, we could see that we should choose a temperature which should be sufficiently, which should be sufficiently high and at the same time which should not be sufficiently low and at the same time you have saturation vapor pressure of that particular element which we fear to for the loss from the steel that we, we fear that that might that particular element might loss might, might go into the vapor phase. So, the pressure should be such that that should be higher than the saturation vapor pressure at that particular temperature. Now, sometimes we have to worry about the environment we, what we choose. For heat treatment. Now, if we have a furnace, this is a practical aspect and which is actually dependent on that clausius clapeyron equation. If we have a furnace and let us say it is a closed furnace and we are working with some metal which is reactive to oxides for me reactive, it is a reactive metal and if it is a reactive metal, we must have something in this particular environment which should reduce the partial pressure of oxygen. Should be reduced. Means, if it is zirconium, if it is titanium, then these metals have very high affinity to oxygen. So, they can form oxides. And whenever oxide forms, because these are very costly metals, so we have loss of metals. At the same time, this oxygen, these metals have got very high solubility, this oxygen solubility towards oxygen. So, the oxygen can 
go into the solution of zirconium as well as titanium. So, the metal property would change. So, that case we have to consider we have to do something so that the partial pressure of oxygen is reduced. One way is this chamber can be connected to a diffusion a pump which could be diffusion pump or rotary pump. So, whenever we have diffusion pump of course, it is integrated with the rotary pump. So, we have advantage of rotary as well as diffusion pump. So, the pressure would go down very low and then if the total pressure of this particular chamber is reduced of course, automatically we have less oxygen there. But many a times diffusion pump would be very costly affair if we want to operate a huge chamber. So, that case it is better to have only rotary pump and with the philosophy that how to reduce the oxygen partial pressure. The thing that can be done which is a very smart move, we can have a pump at the same time we can have a purging facility. purging facility. Now, we have connected to a rotary pump, we take it down to the pressure of 10 to the power minus 4 minus 2 millibar, which is not that much low vacuum. Now, once we take it to 10 to the power minus 2 millibar, we stop the rotary and then purge with high purity argon. Or nitrogen. So, now once again it will the pressure would go to the atmospheric pressure because we are purging in. Now, again we stop it here then open the pump again this pressure is brought down to the minus 2 millibar. So, now you see the initially the partial pressure of oxygen was something around if we consider 21 percent uh, oxygen presence in the atmosphere. So, now because of one cycle that means pumping and then purging and another pumping. So, this is we can say the one cycle pumping then purging then again repumping. This cycle if I consider one cycle now I see that I have already reduced the amount of oxygen from this chamber what was existing in the beginning before we started this pumping operation. Now, again we continue this particular process couple of times means pumping, purging, repumping like that way if we continue. So, what we are doing? We are taking the inside air and replacing with argon. So, that means we are reducing the partial pressure of oxygen. Now, every metal whenever they try to oxidize for example, zirconium plus oxygen equal to zirconium O2, you need at a particular temperature where you need to consider the oxidation, you need a partial pressure of oxygen which is required for the equilibrium to attain. And if the partial pressure of oxygen at that temperature T is more than the partial pressure of oxygen maintained in the system that means, in the chamber. Then as per equilibrium which is basically the loss Atelier's principle, you need this much partial pressure of oxygen to have oxidation of zirconium, but your actual partial pressure is this, this oxygen partial pressure. So, this is low compared to what we need to have this oxidation. So, the reaction would move in this direction in order to maintain equilibrium. So, then you are actually protecting zirconium, but in this process if you see you have reduced the partial pressure of oxygen, but you 
did not require a heavy duty diffusion pump. With the use of rotary pump and with one simple attachment of purging facility, we could do this particular heat treatment. So, now whenever we talk about heat treatment, it is basically how smart you do the heat treatment. See, we can have very sophisticated instruments, but many a times with little bit of smartness for example, where what we have done in the lab scale this is very successful, we can do heat treatment. And also another part which is to be considered in our mind that whenever we are considering this pressure drop, we have to also take care of its vapor pressure. If the saturation vapor pressure at that temperature of zirconium is pretty high, so we have to maintain the pressure by using this argon or nitrogen higher than that the saturation vapor pressure of the of zirconium at that particular temperature in order to avoid zirconium evaporation. So, that means we could understand that the importance of saturation vapor pressure and what is its effect on the time and what on the temperature choice of temperature of heat treatment and the pressure which is to be maintained for doing the heat treatment. Let me stop here, we will continue in our next lecture. Thank you.